Hi guys, exclamation point. With NVIDIA's next line of GPU approaching, I can only wonder how will a theoretical <laughs> 5090 Ti egregious super improve today's gaming experience when CPUs are more often the bottleneck? What do you think a 5090, 5090 should offer to make it worthwhile? Interesting question, wow. right, Alex? Yeah, I mean, I saw this being talked about like a week ago when more Blackwell information came out um the idea that we've seen it in a lot of titles just ones that we've covered on the channel like if you play anything like dragon's dogma 2 uh baller skate even a lot of other titles when going for 1440p on a 4090 you'll be cpu limited probably a lot uh especially yeah and especially with ray tracing you're gonna probably be cpu limited the witcher remastered edition for example that remake or whatever it's called um that thing is also cpu limited and in this case like with 4090 and to you know a degree fsr3 of course there you've got frame gen helping you get around that i think another thing in the future is going to be i think dx is going to be getting some upgrades in the future i don't have any sources there i'm just thinking that it's been a while since we've seen a dx update that was meaningful and um blackwell could potentially rtx 5090 ti egregious super could potentially be uh one of the first gpus to explicitly support things that current dx doesn't support one of the things that we saw recently was um work graphs i supported on ampere and above that's another way and rdna 2 and above or is that rdna 3 Oh gosh, I can't remember if WorkGraphs is RDNA 2 support. Write that in the comments. Um, but the, the idea there is this not, this being able to launch things fr- from the GPU, from the GPU without having to ping back to the CPU to do that. And that's, has a whole layer of complexity to it and requires really great programming and investment and all these other things as well as like competent drivers to allow it. But that's another thing that in the future in future games and in future hardware will get better support more explicit support that's just an example of things that they can do in dx um to just even get better usage of the cpu resources that we have instead of spending time uh doing commands Mm. so I, i think there's a lot of that and also since uh they've already done it frame gen has now one frame in the middle of two yes real frames why not two to four why not let's go let's go let's go all out yeah let's do that uh oliver what do you think about this one i think nvidia is probably in a position like the 3000 series where they don't really need Mm. a ton of new like headline features obviously there could be lots of optimizations and you know in uh, uh like a a micro sense the 3000 series did have new features and did have you know better rt acceleration traversal and all that but they are the market leader, and I'm not really sure that the, the Blackwell needs to have an enormous increase in like headline features. But I'm sure that they mm. will have like lots of demos that look awesome, lots of interesting new machine learning stuff like they did with the Covert Protocol demo. I think that they will have things that will entice people towards these new products. But it's hard to think at the moment of something that would really stand out. I think doing more interpolated frames with frame gen could be one of those things but i don't know if that's like a big uh eye catcher i mean maybe you know just promoting like hey we can do this game at like 480 frames per second or something (laughs) so the competition can only do at 100 or whatever maybe that's like really enticing but uh i think it it would be to a certain people (laughs) yeah yeah Yeah. Yeah. oh well i think we've got uh 4k 240 hertz screens you know coming online now you know those new range of oleds they're they're pretty spectacular so being able to actually utilize the refresh rate of those uh, would be compelling um interesting though but i think ultimately whether the 5090 is cpu bound or not is kind of irrelevant it just needs to be the fastest gpu around but it just needs to cement halo status if it comes along with a bunch of um new software features like an you know an enhanced frame gen or other things you know i think the the thing that you can't underestimate with nvidia is the commitment not just to hardware but to software and to features 
And, you know, it's all about producing that overall package that leaves the competition behind, which is, you know, I think they've been quite successful on that. It makes the competition always in a place where they need to catch up, um, which has been core to the brand for the last you know, couple of generations now. Um, so, yeah, the 5090, I think, just needs to be the fastest GPU. New features would be great. And then basically, as you go down the stack, I think ultimately it's, it's just got to be cheaper and to retain those new extra features. It's, you know, I don't think we're ever going to have uh, another scenario like Ampere where you had, you know, tremendous price cuts plus big uh, increases in performance. I think uh, the GPU market is now moving into what you might call the mobile phone phase where prices mm. are stable and you get like more incremental increases in performance. But it's basically then shifts to what you're doing on the software side. And um, yeah, that basically, as I said, it puts the composition in a position where they need to catch up. But I would argue, right, that, um, you know, we've often talked in the past about uh, NVIDIA being a software company as much as a hardware company. Thing is, Intel are not short of money. At this point, AMD successes with Ryzen, which are legion, they can't be in a, in a situation where they are also cash strapped, right? You know, Mm. It's just a question of whether they think the return on investment is going to be there, whether they think they can take AM, um, whether they think they can take Nvidia on. They've got the money. The question is, are they going to spend it? Um, but yeah, I mean Blackwell, it's a big sort of um, uh, sort of question mark over it because you know with um, the four thousand series, uh, with the Ada cards, they basically had the advantage of both an architectural leap. And what was effectively two process node jumps, because they went from Samsung 8 nanometer down to you know, their own custom 4 nanometer slash 5 nanometer thing. So I'm curious as to what kind of raw performance increase we're going to get, because there's been some crazily outlandish um, suggestions on how good it's going to be versus 4000. So I'm very curious to see what the hardware will actually deliver. But I'm also exceptionally fascinated to see what they're going to be doing on software because, you know, they're not taking the foot off the accelerator anytime soon. You know, they've, they've, they've hit the golden formula, it seems. So, yeah, have to see what happens next. <laughs> <laughs>